Welcome back to Adventures in Reach. Today I'm sharing a story from when I was actually in high school. And I'm sharing it because I think about it every time that I am on a rope, rappelling or climbing, and it saved me on multiple occasions. And so I want to share it with you because I really hope that it keeps somebody else safe out there. And so let's get into it. So back in high school, my friend Chris and I were going on a backpacking trip for the weekend. And we knew it was going to be snowy and icy because it was during the winter and it was already having those conditions and it had been freezing and thawing. And so we were on the Metacomet Trail in Connecticut and there were several ledges and cliffs along that trail. And there was one section where normally there was this kind of a rock ramp that went down along the uh, face of a cliff. And so this slab of rock had uh, probably, you know, iced and broken off and it created this nice uh, long rock ramp and that's where the trail would normally go. But when we were out there, uh, it was all frozen over. So the water had come over and frozen and it was very dangerous to uh, approach because it was even icy up on the top. And so we had a rope and we each had a piece of webbing to make a diaper harness. We each had one carabiner and we each had one ATC to repel with. And so we slung our rope around a tree and lowered ourselves down just on this gentle slope down to a tree that was at the top of the cliff. When we got there, we tied ourselves on and then pulled our rope and brought it down around that lower tree. So we dropped the two ends down and the point where we wanted to go, uh, that was at the base of the trail that you would follow. And it didn't quite reach, the rope didn't quite reach, but we figured that we could rappel off the end and then slide down the last, you know, eight or 10 feet on the hard packed snow and ice back to the very bottom where the trail uh, took off again on the flat area. And so my friend went first and so he ties in and he rappels down and, and he just, you know, goes off the end as planned, slides down, he's good to go at the bottom. And so I go next and I forget to mention here that we were also sharing one set of instep crampons. Now these crampons had four little points and they just went in your instep. They were not intended for this. It's more for like walking on a sidewalk uh, because they were only held on by this little rubber loop that uh, hooked over a metal hook. Um, pretty chintzy little things, but that's what we had. And so I have my one crampon on and I uh, start rappelling down as well. And when I get about halfway down or about 20 feet, I just had this feeling that something was off, something was missing. And so I pull the rope up and I tie a figure A at the end so that I, that felt safer to me so that I couldn't rappel off the end of my rope. And the very next step, my crampon slipped and spun and in the process of falling, I ended up pushing away from the cliff and making my body kind of uh, swing on the rope to a different part of this cliff face. And I also, as I fell, I bumped my arm on the side of the cliff and it just uh, made my hand let go of the rope. And I fell to the very base of that rope to the knot that I had just tied a moment before. And so I hit the end and I'm okay. I'm in a little bit of pain from the whiplash and I'm, I'm just, you know, shocked that I had fallen, but I was okay and that, that knot had held me. And I, as my heart's really going and I'm getting my breath, um, I look down and I can see this pine tree that had fallen and there are all these branches broken off on the top I don't know how old it was or how stiff those branches were, but I, I just thought about the idea of I could have fallen onto that. And that was an additional 20 feet below me. So it would have been roughly a 40 foot fall onto that spiky trunk. And so again, I don't know what would have happened in terms of an injury or death or, or if I would have been fine, but I really don't want to find that out. So anyway, I was able to kind of swing myself back over to the main part where we intended to go down and I was able to rappel to the bottom and before I got to my knot, just untie this and then rappel off and get down just as my friend had and pull that rope along with me. And so everything was fine. It was okay. But to this day, when I get on a rope, 
for rappelling or climbing, I'm constantly tying a figure eight at the bottom or uh, some sort of other stopper knot. I also like these double overhand stoppers or triple overhand stoppers and anything as long as it's a legitimate stopper knot uh, is totally fine. But I do recommend tying a stopper knot at the base of your rope, even if it reaches the bottom. Because when you're tired or it's raining or you're in a rush, you just have that muscle memory of tying that knot and dropping that down. And so you know that even if it reaches the bottom, there's no question in your mind if you swing somewhere else or you saw it wrong, that you know you will at least get caught by that knot. I also always use a Prusik backup now or some sort of mechanical device that's that's going to back me up in case I let go. And so I just highly recommend and implore you guys to please do that if you are ever on rope because you just never know. So I really hope that this helps keep somebody safe and I hope that you consider liking this video and subscribing to Adventures in Reach because I post videos about inspiring adventures and tips to help make them happen for you. And I also encourage you to comment about when you have used these stoppers or when they have saved you and whether or not you use them. And I really hope that uh, you'll follow along and be part of the discussion and that we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.